As drag races go, you will agree, this is quite a good one. After just 18 seconds, I was doing 188 miles an hour and getting ready to break for the mile turn. That's as late as a dare. This is where it's won or lost. Six miles an hour, but was it enough? I must still be ahead, I can't see the plane. No! No! I suspect I may get some abuse for this. I'm afraid there's been a bit of an argument. Jeremy told the Stig that he hadn't tried hard enough in his Mercedes on the fast lap. The Stig said no, the Mercedes was just too wayward and uncontrollable on the track. Jeremy said rubbish, he could hit an apple on the apex of any corner at full speed. So, here's the apple, and here comes, I imagine, a very big crash. The important thing is, Jeremy won't get bored. Actually, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you any money the stick couldn't do it in your car. I can advise you don't have that, but you can I'm going to have it. Bit. I would eat it if he could hit it. Toast of Michelin. <laughs> and he's off, and he's gone already. A little bit of wheel spin there. Now he's heading down to the first corner. Fairly fast. There should be just about enough downforce to get him round. Let's have a look. Look at the speed he's going in there. That's... Tail kicked out a little bit. He's snaking. Now he's going to build up the speed again. Obviously, he's got no stereo today, so no self-help. As he turns into Chicago, running a bit wide, the understeer kicking in. Not much he can do about that. Now he's just back on that three-and-a-half-litre engine into the hammerhead, turning in. He's going to be in serious bother here if he's not careful. Yeah, understeer again, then oversteer, then understeer, then oversteer, and now he can get back on the power. This will be phenomenal through the follow-through. 3G through there, easy-peasy. Getting off the Formula One levels of grip. Through the tyres, oh, that's quick. Now he's got more bother again because he's got to go slowly for the second to last corner, turning in. Held that one very nicely. Last corner again, running wide and across the line. <laughs> now, this is. Uh... Despite the handling issues, shall we say, we are expecting this to be pretty fast. Mixing it up here with the top crowd, the, uh, the 118s, the 117s, the 119s, it actually did it in one minute, 10 points. Staggering. Yes. Absolutely staggering.
Gregory. That's the fastest thing by miles. And now what I'm going to do is take it off again. What? Why? Well, you know the rules, James. If a car can't get over a sleeping policeman, it can't go on that board. We've always said that, and look at the nose on this. I mean, never mind a sleeping policeman. You'd rip that off if you ran over Gandhi. <laughs> I was going to do two laps in this thing. I had to dig deep. I've got to think about everything I've learned. Between the brakes, they feel like they're not working. Oh, this is every dream. <laughs> I've done a lap, just one more. The chief mechanic had seen better, but as far as I was concerned, driving God. And the most scary thing in the whole world, the last corner is coming up and breaking. The team in left, I'm in second, I'm going to nail it for the line. To mark the occasion, the technicians let the engine play its party piece. That's the time you're aiming for, is 1.47.1. I'm about, actually a bit nervous about this, cos I had some fun out there, actually, but I'm not here to compete. Let's see what goes on. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm honestly, I'm here to have fun. <laughs> Who'd like to see the lap? Yeah. Play the tape, here we go. Oh, that's an aggressive start. Last minute to second gear. <laughs> <laughs> now, you see, let's have a look, let's have a look. Where are you using the Stig's line or...? No, that's where the Stig says you should go. All the other F1 drivers do it different than that, go out wide. Isn't too bad. Give it a bit And then into Chicago. Oh, sideways. Yeah, getting sideways on the way in, that was very nice and super tight around there. Now, what are you going to... Come on, man. 56 miles an hour. <laughs> 56 is quick. Now, this is where everyone goes... God. Well, that's quite s sort of slow and tidy through there. I was expecting more flamboyance. Now, here we go. Look at the grip. This thing will put Formula 1 cars to shame. It won't. It won't, it won't, it won't. There we are across... Oh, you've gone for the slippery inside bit there. And... Taking this seriously. I've never seen anyone so lackadaisical about. Whoa, that was lackadaisical but sideways and coming up to Gambon now, and that's pretty, pretty flamboyant. And there we are! <laughs> across the line. <laughs> so <sighs> quicker or slower? What do you think? <laughs> Mark's a quick guy. OK, you did it. Not competitive. <laughs> <laughs> One minute. And bearing in mind, this is on a track covered in water and oil. 44.7. No. <laughs> and that's wet and oil. How did you do that? Should we do it? Insurers. There's no other way. 
worth saying that this is a magnificent piece of road building. Not like PlayStation this, you can't just press the reset button when you get it wrong. You just go through the pearly gates on fire. This Aston is starting to make a certain amount of good sense. Even the brakes have stopped squeaking. Climbing up now past 8,000 feet. I think at this altitude, the Lambo has got the advantage. I shall solve that, though, with some bravery. This is hard work. If I had no air conditioning, I'd look ridiculous now. We finished our run, and as the cars ticked themselves cool, we knew their work was done. Our quest was at an end. Davos to Stelvio, the greatest driving road in the world.